Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we might uh, begin. Um, my name's Sam Bickersteth, uh, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation this Monday morning from London, but um, hopefully with a number of colleagues around the world. You can see me here, Bat, in Ahmedabad, in Gujarat, on the screen, and colleagues also in UNESCAP in Bangkok. Um, welcome to them and any others who may be listening online to ODI. This is a CDK and ODI um, uh, meeting to present and discuss a new publication, a guide to the future framework of DRR. Um, and this is something that we've been working on a series of uh, meetings and publications in CDKN uh, in partnership with ODI and other members of our alliance um, to address the opportunities and the challenges currently in the interface between the DRR climate change and development agendas. Um, so, so for me, Monday morning is not DRR. Monday morning is a, an intertwining of those three, uh, those three challenges, um, with obvious opportunities that the three international moments have in 2015, with more volume. Um, and uh, it, it seemed to me, somebody made the statement, which I heard last week, um, I think the week before, that the HFA2 agreement could be the least contentious of the three agreements, and it could help set the scene for ambitious um, and effective, set the tone for ambitious and effective international agreements that follow on through 2015, both those around the, the post-2015 agenda and the UNFCCC uh, climate change deal, which we all hope will be of an ambitious and just nature f in Paris in the, at the end of that year, of next year, not that year, next year, soon. Um, but Tom tells me it's not necessarily without contention, and there are issues, and I think this paper seeks to set out some guidance to enable national policymakers and those engaging and linking with this at international level to address and consider those issues. And it is a, a, a guidance at international to inform the international framework, um, but of course it's at the national level where the change will occur. It's that linkage between the international and the, interna and the national, which is of course critical. So at the national level is where the change happens. I had the pleasure to visit um, Adisha with Mihir Bat, who we can still see on our screens. We're hoping the connection stays with you, Mihir, so that we can see you. But he and I were in the field uh, in Adisha in, uh, in India um, as Cyclone Phelan hit, the Category 5 um, cyclone in which, sadly, 38 people died, but we were reminded of a similar event of similar, even possibly less magnitude, um, only um, 15 years earlier, had killed some 15,000 people. For me, that's a stark reminder of the power of institutions and political will to take action. And this report picks up on the many challenges uh, and tragedies around poor governance, around weak institutions, and lack of political will and resources to address, or address um, disaster management, but it also points out where success has happened and there is a w where there's a will to do something and that cyclone failing we saw demonstrably with our own eyes, uh, Mihir and I, just um, a year ago. So Tom is going to uh, set the scene with the paper. We're going to hear from Mihir from India, um, from, uh, from Steve on my right, um, Steve Barnes, welcome to, to ODI this morning, um, and to Shamika Sirimani, who's going to be hopefully joining us from Bangkok um, later on. So Tom, I'll hand over to you first, and we'll then have questions after the presentation, so keep those, and we'll be taking some questions online as well. Tom. 